This video is part of my complete CCNA 200-301 course. Have a look at this playlist if you wanna see other videos in my course. Now in the previous video in this course, I explained how packets and frames flow through a network and we used HTTP in that example. I showed you port numbers, I showed you ethernet types, I showed you protocol numbers. In this video, we're gonna continue the discussion by looking at an email transmission. So how does a email get sent and received? In this video, we're gonna look at two protocols, SMTP and POP3. Okay, let's get started. What I'll do here is let's start email. Let's compose an email. And in this example, the only email address used is Peter at cisco.com. Going to our server again, you can see that we're running multiple services on the server. We've got HTTP, TFTP, FTP, but here we've got an email server. The only user account I've configured on the server is Peter. You could create a different one if you wanted to. So you could add another user for yourself. We've got two email services running here, simple mail transfer protocol or SMTP and POP3. POP3 is an older protocol that allows us to retrieve email from an email server. SMTP allows us to transmit email. These protocols use different port numbers. So let's actually show that practically. So test email, test email showing port numbers. Before I click send, I wanna make sure that I'm running simulation mode, which I am. And now I'll click send. SMTP uses TCP. Looking at that TCP message, inbound PDU, we have our source and destination MAC addresses, PC talking to the server, PC IP address talking to the server IP address. So layer two, layer three, this is IP version four. Again, just to recap, make sure that you know this stuff. At layer two, the type field indicates that the protocol at layer three is IP version four. IP version six has a different protocol number. We know the protocol at layer four because of this number, TCP. So that indicates TCP at layer four. Destination port number is 25. What is 25? Looking at the IANA website, port 25 is simple mail transfer, SMTP. So random port number or ephemeral port number going to port 25. So we are sending an email to the server using SMTP. So I'll push that along. So we've got our TCP, what's called the three-way handshake that takes place. So we have to use what are called synchronization bits and there has to be an acknowledgement. I'll talk about that in a separate video, but notice here we've got our inbound PDU going to the server once again, source port number, destination port number, at a layer four, you can see SMTP data. So we are sending data to the server. This will be our actual email going to the server. And now the server replies back, looking at that, the message to the PC, notice port 25 talking to the agreed port number of 1027 SMTP data. Another reason we have the TCP handshake is we have to agree what port numbers we're gonna be talking on. If you choose a random port number to talk to me, how will I know what your random port number is? You need to tell me that, or your ephemeral port number. You need to tell me what that is. Notice also we have sequence numbers and acknowledgements in the messages. So that takes place. And now suddenly we've got some more TCP. Let's have a look at that TCP message. Inbound PDU, still using port 25. So a bunch of TCP messages. I ran out of space there. Now, when I was recording this video, Packet Tracer crashed. What I should have done is filter events, as I explained in this video. So if you don't wanna have the same issue, have a look at this video. Filter your events in Packet Tracer. In that video, I explain how to optimize Packet Tracer, how to use it better. 
So have a look at that video so that you don't have the same issue that I encountered when I was recording this video. Okay, let's go back to the original video where I show you how to send and receive emails in Packet Tracer and we look at how the packets flow in a network. Okay, so I didn't get my email. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna send it to peter at cisco.com. Test two, test two. Send my email. Now to retrieve my email, I'm gonna to go to simulation mode and I'm gonna click retrieve to get my email from the server. So what have we got here? What message is this? Notice this is TCP, but the port number is 110. What is 110? On the IANA website, we can see that this is post office protocol version three or POP3. So this is the protocol used to retrieve the message from the server. So here's the actual POP3 message. Let's have a look at that. Inbound means it's inbound to the switch. So it'll be the same inbound and outbound on the switch. Source MAC address is PC, destination MAC address is server. Type is 800, telling us that it's IP version four. Source and destination IP addresses, PC and server. Protocol used at layer four is TCP. We can see that here. Source port number used by the PC is this. Destination port number is 110. This is POP3 data. So that will go to the server. Message goes back to the PC. We've got some TCP messages. Let's go to real time. And then hopefully on my PC, what you can see is I've received my messages now. So here's my original message actually that's been retrieved from the server. And here's my test two message that was received from the server. Now I can spend a long time showing you different protocols here. As an example, you could open up a command prompt and then open up FTP to the server and log in as Cisco Cisco, username Cisco password Cisco, and use the command DRR to see the files on the server. If you ran simulation mode, you'd be able to see those messages to the server. So spend some time having a look at the different protocols. Use email, use HTTP, use FTP to see the messages and the protocols. Simulation mode in Packet Trace is great to actually see what's going on. So fantastic way to actually learn the protocols. People disappear.